Miss Floyd Rose. Uh, thank you. Um, several years ago, there was a mouse looking through a small hole in the kitchen wall, and he saw a farmer and his wife open a small box. And the mouse said to himself, Oh my, what goodies I will get today. But unfortunately, when the uh, farmer opened that box and pulled out something, it was a mouse trap. And so the mouse ran out of the house and went down to the barnyard and said to the chicken, there's a mouse trap in that house. There's a mouse trap in the house. A mouse trap in the house. And the chicken said, well, that's of no concern to me. I'm a chicken. A mouse trap is designed to trap mice. I'm not a mouse. I don't belong to the mice family. That's your problem. And so he was disappointed, but he ran over and said to the pig, there's a mouse trap in the house. There's a mouse trap in the house. And the pig said, look at me. Why should I be concerned about a mouse trap? It poses no threat or danger to me. That's your problem. You deal with that. Disappointed, but he ran over to the cow and he said to the cow, there's a mouse trap in the house. There's a mouse trap in the house. And the cow said, well, I'm feeling it, brother, but you know, that's, that's your problem. But I tell you what, I'm going to have a meeting of the cows tonight, and we'll pray for you. But that's your problem, and a problem for mice. He was disappointed, but he went back up to the house and looked through that hole again. And over into the night, he heard snap, and the farmer's wife turned on the light, and as she reached down to see what was going on, she noticed that the tail of a snake had been trapped by that mouse trap. But then as she endeavored to free it, that snake bit her, and her husband grabbed her and took her to the emergency room of the hospital, and they gave her a shot and sent her home, and when she got home, she didn't get any better. In fact, she developed a fever, and so her husband called the doctor, and the doctor told her husband, well, I'll tell you what you do. You um, put her to bed, and then you make her a big bowl of chicken soup. <laughs> and so the farmer went out to the barnyard and took that chicken, wrung its neck, killed it, and made his wife a bowl of chicken soup, and the mouse shook his head said, I tried to tell that chick that there was a mouse trap in the house. But the story doesn't end there. She didn't get any better, and family and friends came to visit with her and to console her, and the farmer walked in one day and said, y'all like barbecue? I said, yeah. He said, well, I got a pig out in there. Boom. So he went out in the barn and grabbed that pig and killed that pig, barbecued it. And the mouse said, I tried to tell you that there was a mouse trap in the house. The <laughs> story still doesn't end. The farmer's wife died. And after the funeral, there's always food to eat. And so the farmer killed the cow. And then cooked that cow. And the mouse shook his head and said, I tried to tell them all that there was a mouse trap in the house. And I've come to this place today to tell you there's a mouse trap in the house. And Dr. Martin Luther King, before whose uh, memorial we stand today, reminded us all that there's a mutual dependence and a necessary connection between all of us. And none of us 
can be all that we ought to be until the rest of us are all that we need to be. Amen. We can never be all that we need to be until the rest of us are all that we ought to be. John Doan put it in graphic terms when he said, no man is an island, no man stands alone. Each man's joy is joy to me and each man's grief is my own. I am involved in mankind. And so, Dr. King had it right. And now, for these people who wouldn't have walked to the first stop sign with him, are using his words and his image to promote something that he was for in order to uh, achieve something that he was against is insulting to me and ought to be offensive to every lover of Dr. King, everyone that he fought for, whether black, white, red, or brown. It's just wrong. When I heard them use Dr. King's image and, and sound the like voice of Morgan Freeman to deceive the black community, I couldn't take it. And I said to Sam and to J.C. Cummings, it's time to march. That's why we're here today. Well, Sam's going to tell you what you need to do, but I have to tell you this. I have to tell you this. When I came here, it must have been 1998, and I was elected president of the People's Tribunal by hundreds of people right down here at St. James Church. I said to that crowd then, and I tell you now, I don't sell out the interests of the people, a part of which I am. I never have and I never will. And so when I was called and invited to a meeting, and I accepted the invitation, I listened and I said, I have two questions. I want to know how this is going to improve the education, education of black children. And, and when there was no answer to that, I said, I've got another answer, I, another question. I want to know whether or not this is a prelude to the uh, consolidation of the city and county governments. And they swore that it was not. But when I left the meeting and started to my call, white man who was seated right across from me followed me to my car and he said, Reverend Rose, that's what it's about. I said, you didn't even have to tell me. I know. I know. And Dr. King would be against anything that would dilute the power, the economic and political power of the people that he died for. And I stand here to tell you, we ain't going that way. We've suffered too long. We've bled too profusely. We've marched too far. We've died too young. We can't go back now. And I encourage you to say, not on the 8th, but Monday, Monday, no, not this time, not now. There's a... There's a mouse in there. 